if he can relax. So if there is a nice pace on and he gets into a rhythm, he could still be open to improving yet. So I'm not giving up on boiling point. I think there's plenty of ability there. Tactically, it is fascinating. Tom Marquand could well go forward on socialite, but if he does, he's going to have to get him to settle better than what he did at Newmarket. He really is. And the Irish Raider, Atlantic Oaks, was a progressive two-year-old. Back on track last time at the Coa, but needs more again here. Last one to go forward. Let's join Alan Howes. Al Musmak playing up in the stalls a little. All in. And they're off. Racing away one mile for the Bonhams Thoroughbred Stakes at Group 3 level. Dancing Gemini Al Musmak, the first two to begin. Not far behind them, Native American with Dancing Gemini. And then more towards the near side, toward the running rail, is Lead Artist. And they are going a strong gallop. Lead Artist towards the inside of Dancing Gemini Al Musmak. Native American is wider out. Settled in behind this strong pace at the moment is Atlantic Coast in the black and red. Socialite in the light green and black. Then the green cap tar force further behind to King's Gamble in the grey silks together out the back there with boiling point as they're through the five furlong marker and shortly be turning the way back towards home it is lead artist who has now about a three parts of a length advantage from Native American who sits in second dancing Gemini third then came Al Musmak in fourth socialite and Atlantic Coast are the next two then came task force followed another length away by King's Gamble and boiling point is at the rear of the field in Inside the final three furlongs and out in front it's lead artist Al Musmak now pushed along so to Native American dancing Gemini down toward the inside in the orange and dark blue task force is trying to go that route King's Gamble improving in the grey silks it's still lead artist they will show with the advantage to the final furlong couple of lengths to dancing Gemini then King's Gamble task force has now found a gap leaving it very late lead artist inside the final half with a couple of lengths call over King's Gamble the running on task force but it's lead artist to win the bottoms thoroughbred stakes lead artist from the never nearer king's gamble back in third task force and then came dancing gemini and boiling point and al musmak Lead artist has won and has resumed his fast upward progress, delivered on that mighty talent that he showed at York two starts ago. A bit flat last time, excuses we heard from John Gosden immediately before this race and that the faster ground would suit. It certainly has. He's gone to the front early and he has made all under Kieran Schumark, winning this group three for John and Thady Gosden. In second, it is King's Gamble for Danny Ted Hope and Rafe Beckett, fifth in the Britannia last time and stepping up with a plum to group three company and finishing second. And in third is his stable companion Task Force, who is a bit of a hard luck story to some degree, locked against the rail in that green Judmont cap, trying to find a run, Ross Ryan eventually squeezes through, and it's, he's making up ground late on, but in the end he can only manage third place. Dancing Gemini has run well, creditably enough, in fourth. Yeah, um, I, I, don't, I don't know if Boiling Point actually caught him on the line. Oh, did he? Possibly. Very tight. It no, was you're tight right. For, it was tight for fourth. Ja Dancing Gemini sort of dropping away a little bit with Boiling Point flying home. But the winner, lead artist, a positive ride from Kieran Schumark. A slight change in tactics there. Um, and he did have to be positive in order to be able to get the lead because they were going a good clip out of the stalls. As you predicted, they did change the tactics on Socialite in the green and black colours and it backfired. Oh, way too keen. He's going to have to go back down and trip. There's ability in there, but he's showing too much pace and he's been too keen for the mile at the moment. Um, at this point, lead artist managed to get, get to the front sort of with ease. Everyone else tried to slot into their position, but out wide, Native American in that first-time visor, James Doyle was keen to get him right up there, and that made the pace honest. Yeah, he, he slots across and eventually will become alongside lead artist. Yeah. Dancing Gemini slots in just behind, ahead of on the rail of Socialize, and just on his outside is Almus Mac. Almus Mac never looked that comfortable for me. Um, I don't know whether it was a combination of the ground and the track. Towards the rear, King's Gamble and Boiling Point both settled nicely, got into a rhythm. And actually, those back three have made up a lot of ground to be mm. placed because at this point, Kieran Schumach and James Doyle have just slowed it up into the bend and dictated that pace, allowed their horse to fill their lungs before properly going for home. And They've done well, those three horses that have closed. And they've been ridden in contrasting ways. You can see Danny Tubhope coming on the outside in the grey colours, creeping forward on King's Gamble. Meanwhile, Ross Ryan's gone the brave way against the inside rail. Yeah, Ross, sort of from where he was, locked up on the rail the whole way. He sort of had to commit to staying there. The gap did open eventually, and he did pick up, but not with immediate effect. So I don't think he's too unlucky. Danny Tubhope, as you say, switched out on King's Gamble. He has 
ran with the promise that the yard sort of thought he had. They've always held him in high regard, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him up in trip actually at some point because he looked like he was really strong to the line. And Boiling Point did run on nicely. Um, no real excuses for him. I don't think he was just a little bit outpaced late on. He was um, still got to prove that the mile is what he wants for me. I still wonder whether he might be more effective at seven furlongs. because I was expecting the final furlong to be a bit stronger than it actually was. Yeah, I told you, a faster run seven probably suit him that little bit better. Just looking at the run through of Task Force, I agree with you. I don't think he's been unlucky enough to actually lose a position, has he? Uh, I think he'd have finished third even had he had a clearer run. He's just shifting to his right a little bit as well. You can see that slightly awkward head carriage where, mm. you know, you can understand why his wind maybe has caught him before. The tongue tie obviously been added. But hopefully this will be a run that's going to give him some confidence. Now that he knows, OK, I can breathe, I can finish off my race, next time he might just well go through with it that little bit better again. It takes horses a bit of time and confidence if the wind's been catching them. And hopefully that's a, a step back in the right direction. Massive step in the right direction for the winner, though, lead artist, who totally different horse to what we saw at Newmarket. Yeah, such a polished performance here. I mean, it was more like how he raced at York, where he went through the race so zestily, didn't he, and then forged clear. This was much more like that. Yeah, I sort of wondered earlier. I thought, they've had to go a good gallop here for, you know, Kieran to really get to the front. And he did manage to fill their lungs as they sort of turned in for home down the hill. But he's been good here, this horse, because he's kept finding for pressure. A couple of horses have come to try and nab the lead off him, and he wasn't going to give it away easily. He's shown a much better performance right back to the horse that, as you say, showed so much promise at York. And, uh, yeah, it could well be onwards and upwards for him now.